Hey, we're here today in Washington, Georgia. We're putting up our new building, building number one. It's almost done. What's going on, guys? I've got a clean spark update for you. I'm going to feature the clip that you just saw the beginning of. We're going to get into that. I'm going to leave you down below Clean Spark's YouTube page. If you haven't subscribed, go subscribe to them. Consider subscribing to me as well if you haven't. Now we're also going to look at Clean Spark on the chart. We did break a support level, and I'm going to give you some future levels to watch there. And also, I did want to remind you guys that we are we are right around a week away from their next Bitcoin mining update. And this is going to give us a further look into how their next earnings is going to go. It's going to be important that you tune into their next Bitcoin mining update. Now, first off, let's roll the rest of that clip and then we'll get into the chart. Hey, we're here today in Washington, Georgia. We're putting up our new building, building number one. It's almost done. Here with Dell Branch, our site manager. Tell us about it. Well, building number one is going up well above schedule. Uh, everything's going great. This building will house about 3,780 machines and it's 440 feet long. We're real excited about what we're doing. We can't do it without all the hard work of the people out here. We have a lot of crews running and we're excited about the future. So it's nice to get an update from them regarding their 50 megawatts they're working on here in Washington, Georgia. Now let's check out the chart for CleanSpark. And then I mentioned this in a previous video, what's going on with Bitcoin, but I'll show you guys that as well if you haven't seen my last video. Let's check it out. So first off, CleanSpark. We did break our broadening pattern here that we had. And zooming in, this is why I love patterns. Zooming in, you can see a clear reaction to it. We bounced off it here, indicating that it's continuing as a support. We did find resistance and weren't able to break out of our previous high. We started pulling back. Once we broke this, we did attempt to break back into it. You can see that there was a clear reaction in the market to this level of support. It wasn't able to hold it, however, and we are starting to drop. And we actually just broke this 290 area, which I saw as another level of support. Now, if we do continue to pull back, this 240 area is going to be really important to watch. And you can see that there was definitely clear reactions on that level. It was a resistance here, a resistance once more, had a false breakout, we didn't get a candle to close above, and on the reaction of us not breaking out, it caused a bit of a sell-off. Of course, earnings came out and accelerated that sell-off as well. And you'll notice, when we finally tried to break out of it, we failed, retested, finally broke out of it, kind of established it here as a support, and then came back and bounced off of it. So this is a clear level to watch, this 240 area. But we'll have to see how we perform next week. We already had a pretty tough sell-off here. Most of the RSIs are quite oversold. But when you zoom out to larger time frames like the four hour, you know, longer time frames than that even, you'll see that we do have room to drop still on the RSI before people start seeing that oversold indicator and potentially start gobbling it up. But you can see that right now things are all looking pretty bad. MACD falling, RSI pointing down, and the candles are dropping. Now I did want to pull up the daily candles, and you'll see that the EMAs have not flipped yet. We almost saw that flip. If we would have continued upwards, we could have got more momentum on the you know witness of that flip, but we did not flip the EMAs yet, and we are still likely in a downtrend. Now I did want to pull up Bitcoin for you guys because there is a very important level to watch, and it's going from this ascending support that was started at the beginning of this year. Now we did break this roughly 23.4 area, and that was an important level of support. You can see that after these breakouts here, it found resistance on it. And moving forward, the market was looking to see a breakout of this resistance. Once we saw that, we saw an accelerated run. There's of course other factors contributing to it, like Bitcoin running up during that time, all kinds of things. But you'll see that it also established it as a support, bounced off of it, and once we broke out of it, we had a little bit of an accelerated drop. Now, I do think moving forwards that also, of course, this $25,000 area is still a clear resistance, but this $23,400 area is going to continue to be a resistance for us as well. If we can break out of this and continue this uptrend, that'll be great to see. However, you know, if we do break this uptrend, if we do break this ascending support, we can definitely retest some lower levels on Bitcoin. Now, we did just get our PCE, and that definitely stoked some more fear in the market, caused Bitcoin to sell off, caused the stock market to sell off as well. And the next date coming up that we're going to have to watch out for is CPI because we do have one more until the next Fed meeting and the whole market is going to be watching that. And I do expect potentially a little bit of fear now being that tables have kind of turned on inflation and it doesn't seem like the Fed's work is working enough and we may see some more rate hikes. We already expect a few, but we may see a few more than that. And that's definitely causing some fear in the market. But in the end with Bitcoin, at least we all know that the halving is approaching. We are just about at that one year mark. And if you haven't watched a previous video about the halvings and how we typically see a run up in anticipation once we get that year mark, definitely check that video out. I'll leave it down below for you. But I do believe despite what's going on here with the market, you know, Bitcoin's still looking quite good. 
and clean spark in terms of selling their bitcoin you know they're going to be selling their bitcoin still in this pretty good range in the low 20,000s. in the last quarter a lot of their bitcoin was sold anywhere from 17 to 21,000 or so and i do expect this quarter we're going to see a bit of a turnaround we may even see year over year increase in revenue but i do expect at the very least we are going to see quarterly increase in clean sparks revenue but a huge thing that we're going to have to watch out for is their next bitcoin mining update and we're going to kind of have an idea on what to expect next quarter but to me despite bitcoin pulling back a bit i think things are still looking good and as we get through the next couple of months with these inflation uncertainties and macro environment headwinds we will eventually get to a better place and of course we are getting closer and closer to the having. but hopefully today didn't shake you up too bad it's definitely a rough day in the market and has been a relatively rough week to be honest but my thoughts are i'm just going to continue to stay the course take advantage of the fear and down the road a year two years maybe three years from now be able to sell the greed and looking back everyone will say oh it must have been so easy to buy you know buy at these low prices i wish i was them well, it always seems that way looking back. It always seems like it was just so easy to go back there and buy during all this fear. But, you know, people looking back don't realize the emotions involved during that time. But you know me, I'll continue to take advantage of this. But what say you? How have you been doing lately? Have you been adding to CleanSpark? Have you been adding to your high conviction stocks? Have you been holding off a bit in anticipation of some lower prices? Let me know down below. Thanks as always, guys, and have a good rest of your weekend.